Today we're going to catch up with Kathy and Josh just to see how they feel the market this year will differ from last year. So we're going into a new year and I just want to catch up on what you thought of the market last year in comparison to 2021. Thanks Jess. Um, really difficult market um, compared to 2021. A um, lot harder to um, get people on the market, get mm -hmm. the prices they wanted. Um, so hopefully we're not going to have the same problem this year. Do you think the lack of stock was the reason that people were so reluctant to put their house on the market last year? Yes, it was, most definitely. It's a bit um, scary, isn't it, going for it if you can't find anything? Absolutely, and it all comes down to timing. And when you make that commitment to move, and we were getting buyers for our vendors, they were excited and they wanted to move. Um, and then nothing. that joy became a pain because yeah. they were struggling to find. And were full threes generally higher than the year before? Across the border, was it kind of stuff just took much longer to go through? Um, we were lucky in our branch. Um, our fall through rate um, was actually quite low for the year. Oh, that's good. I think our problem was the fact that things were taking twice, yeah. maybe three times as long to go through. Yeah. What did you find, Josh? Yeah, North North's fall through rate was high. I mean, normally you work on 25% fall through rate. I think North was at about 35%. So one in three deals fell through last year. Yeah, that's which was quite tough. Horrific. How do you find your team take it when things get a bit tougher? Because 2021 was quite like a fun year, I'd say. They stopped coming in. <laughs> <laughs> no shows. <laughs> <laughs> Too many bugs. Sick yeah. Go through the roof. <laughs> I don't actually think that's true, is it? No, no, it isn't. What um, do, you, do you have to just try and g them up a little bit more? You have to dig deep and they care about the vendors so much yeah so they want everything to work out for the vendors um so yeah dig deep what about you josh do you dance for him give him a little sing song yeah just dig deep <laughs> um, buy them a lot of lunches yeah <laughs> no keep i think sweet i think that's i think that's just just part of the territory 21 was unbelievable but not normal would you say it was completely abnormal. We've never seen anything like it. Mm. Um, so to go from that to, you know, maybe... Scrapping around for scrapping deals. Scrapping around for deals. Yeah, that's hard, isn't it? But actually, I think that makes you a better agent. Yeah. Yeah. It's like there's always something to be learned, isn't there? There's always a new way to find something that you can put together. Yeah. And it's a learning curve for new members of the team as well. What did um, the younger agents among us that hadn't worked, well, there's loads of them that haven't worked in something that's kind of probably a bit of last year going into this year, what's like the three things you would say to them to try and keep ploughing on? Because um, it all does come good in the end, really, doesn't it? It does. It's really fulfilling if when stuff does happen, it just, it's just the time and the patience they have to put in to, to get it to that point. I think it's so important to keep having conversations with your vendors, with your buyers, um, because the more you talk to them, the more you realise that actually they might not be set on one area and you could maybe find them a house in another area. Mm. Um, and the more you keep talking to people, I think the easier it is to find them a home. Mm. So what about you, Josh? Yeah, I think the agents that speak to the most people are the ones that are going to win. But people f focus on... Well, certainly the average age, it's going to focus on transaction numbers and the properties, but the base of it all is the relationships game. So the, the agents that speak to the most people... Are the ones that are going to... Are going to win. And what do you think about the competition over the last year? Has it got <clears throat> tougher in terms of, is it fees? Is it, um, I don't know, are people kind of offering more as part of their service no, than I think they used to? I think in a difficult market, you're going to see the better agents gain more market share. Because any, in, a, in a good market like 2021, my nan could have probably sold a house. <laughs> I so, reckon your nan could sell a house anyway. She, she'd be a good agent. <laughs> she'd be a good You'd agent. You'd have no choice but to buy Although it. she'd probably so. drink in the office. I think... Um, my kind of nan. <laughs> up she flew. I think that... Yeah, I think in a harder market, the good agents is just going to win more and more and more. Because the average agents, the only kind of tool in they in their box they're going to have is fee battle. Yeah. But you're going to get what you pay for. So if cheap was going to win, 
they would have gone the other way, but they haven't. They've plummeted. Mm. So the good agents will probably charge more, but it's all relevant because if that agent gets you an extra 5%, but they charge you one and a half... That's paid for it, basically. They're, they're, they're going to get you 3.5% more for your money. So the actual agent that gets you more money is the cheapest agent yeah. because you walk away with more money in your pocket. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but in a harder market, you need an agent that's going to fight for you. And, you and need, also and try and find something for you as well. 100%. It's, it's, mm. not, it's not about just selling the property. It's actually finding them their new home. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the exciting thing, I think, for this year. Yeah, I think so as well. I think there's a lot of um, others who are just happy to stick something on the market, wait for it to sell, and then kind of leave a client there to their own devices to just source something. Whereas if you can actively phone through whoever you've got registered to try and find them something, that goes a lot further, doesn't it? Mm takes yeah. the stress away from them because they people don't really they know what they're doing but they don't have the access to stuff that we have to try and find them their next house do they but we know what's co- we know what stock mm. we're going to have coming on so the great thing is we can actually phone our clients and give them the heads up about property that we're going to have for sale and make sure they're first in before it actually hits the market yeah but not everything hits market that's the key here is that people think we'll just wait for right move and see what happens but I'd say probably 15, 20% of our deals don't make it to right move. Not and what, do you think that'll be the same this year? I think you'll have, there, there's going to be a select amount of clients that they want privacy. They don't want people, they don't want their neighbours to know they're moving. They, they want a low key approach. So, and we have what we call pocket listings. So we've probably got 10 listings on the board at the moment that aren't, you won't find on right move. So the good agents are going to ones that A, can get you sold off market and B, that can get you into houses off market. Some, some, some clients value privacy over anything else. And if you've got an agent that just stick things on right move, you're not going to get access to the good mm. stuff. So it isn't just about getting you on market and trying to get people through the door. It's about being creative and giving you access to things that yeah, nine out of ten times... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And do you think you'll see more people that are moving from higher-end stock this year and downsizing... Hundred percent. Yeah. 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 Has yes. that happened already? I've started to see that actually in the last mm. week with the amount of valuations that we're booking on larger price stock. Yeah, that's good. That's quite good for people that are still wanting to upsize though, because I feel like that was quite. There wasn't much around the last couple of le- couple of years for people wanting to go bigger, but that's very so true. Work, that's yeah. been a real challenge. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're in a cost of living crisis, so you'll see a lot of downsizers coming to market now. People who kids have probably left home historically kids are left home and the parents wouldn't have probably moved just yet because they're waiting for everyone to come back yeah should we downsize <clears throat> yeah looking for a two-bed flat <laughs> but <laughs> i was thinking a caravan but there we go but people are trimming <laughs> people are going to trim now so you'll find a lot of four beds attached come to market five beds attached come to yeah. market but the more that comes to market the more the prices are softening and i think we're now we're in a market we're in a transition period buyers think market's probably 10% lower than it actually is and vendors probably think that market's probably 10% higher, higher than it actually yeah. is yeah, so definitely. there will be a transitional period now where the two will have to combine Absolutely. I feel like particularly where you are <clears throat> Kath in Old Town having more higher end stock will be good because I just remember last year there were so many people in the villages that wanted Old Town mm. but wanted big in Old Town that they just really really struggled and a couple of them ended up coming off the market mm. because they couldn't find yeah. um and i just remember them being in positions where obviously you don't know everything about them but i feel like they're the people that will still be able to upsize this year so i feel like people will definitely benefit from those um those downsizers oh 100%. in places like old town in particular 100 percent, and you're absolutely right you know when i looked the other day um there was 32 houses for sale um, in our area, over four hundred thousand pounds. Yeah, yeah, that's so, that's so different in comparison to last year, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and what about first-time buyers? Have you heard less from them so far this year? No, not at all. Um, we are, we have got a good, um, a good supply of first-time buyers. Oh, that's still good. Looking to still because that's, to I buy. suppose, what. Um, I've seen loads of stuff on socials <coughs> where people are kind of advising first-time buyers not to buy at the moment, um, which seems daft because I feel like if I was a first-time buyer, I would just want to buy. 
if I had to amend my budget because mortgage rates were up, then that's kind of what they do. So I didn't feel like it would drop off, but obviously... So, and it's, we, so, I don't know. so we are seeing people amend their budgets. That's absolutely yeah. right um, because of the um, the higher interest rates. But having said that, they still want to buy because they can actually see the prices softening. So they've actually got a bit of motivation to try yeah. and actually buy something. And where a few years ago investors were always like blowing um, first time buyers out the water a little bit. And then that's when the prices of two beds just seem to go from like one extreme to the other. Mm. Do you think they'll be? It will be easier for first-time buyers to secure places now because I hope obviously so. investors will have be having the same issues with interest rates and Absolutely. stuff like that. Yeah, I hope so. Not only that, capital gains tax is going to be up this year, so you'll see an influx of typical buy-to-let stock hit markets. So there'll be a lot more choice for first-time buyers yeah, now because yeah. with capital gains, it isn't as it stands. You'll want investors to get out before that happens. But I think everyone, you know, the question is always, oh, this isn't the right time to buy, or the amount of times I've been asked, when's the best time to buy? The best time to buy was always last year. Every year, it's last year, because property trends upwards. There might be dips in market, but over a longer period of time, that property always goes up. So the best time to buy was yesterday or last year. Mm. That will always be the case. Mm. But hopefully more available will still motivate first-time buyers to keep keep going this year. But we're registering new applicants as well, so... That's a very positive sign, yeah, I think. That um, stuff will keep moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah that is good. We're registering new people coming to the area or currently in rented looking to buy. So I feel that's a real positive sign. And have you had more coming from out of area? Um, we've had a steady, um, a steady flux of people coming from out of area, I think, for, for the last three years. Um, and I think that's going to continue. I, I don't think yeah. that's going to change. I saw the um, plans or... The hopeful plans for the old museum in Old Town. Oh, I know. Have you seen yeah, it looks amazing. What we hoping that will go through, I guess. Yeah, it, it looks, looks so nice, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. I feel like that will be massive for people moving to Old Town and Town. Definitely, mm. they can walk up to somewhere that's like that. It makes a massive difference, doesn't it? Yeah, with a coffee shop. And, yeah. Um, it's like a people meeting place. Isn't it, it looks like but a beautiful landmark. Yeah, it looks sort of like if you are on holiday in somewhere like I don't know Paris or Rome. Where everyone sits outside, just need the weather, need them to crack on. Take so that. Do we um think that will go through? Do you hear Do you it's, hear much about it there, or is it just so early to tell? Um, I think it's too early to tell. Yeah, too early to tell. But the people that live in Old Town currently seem to be rooting for it, don't Absolutely. they? Absolutely. Yeah. So that Very definitely positive. helps, doesn't it? Anything else to add for twenty twenty three? What you think might happen? What you hope won't happen? You're starting to see already that the listing, there's a lot more listings coming to market already in the first, second week of Jan. And historically, you look back at transactional volumes, actually, I looked last night, transactional volumes are slightly up on last Jan. So the market isn't actually in a period of no. we're really struggling. But the problem is the media portray that everything is a yeah, lot worse than it is. Yeah, they put people off, don't they? Yeah, they do, 100%. They put people off getting mortgages and stuff or trying to move because everyone just assumes it's... Out of but, out of budget, but there's always reasons that people move, and mm-hmm. those reasons, you know, don't go away. Mm. You know, their family's extended. Um, they, you know, they get a new job, they get promotion, all those kinds of things that's still happening in Swindon. Um, and for those reasons, pe- people, people want still to go. move. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, are you looking forward to this year? Absolutely. Buzzing. Oh, good. Bring it on. Good. And um, what's your favourite part of your job, Cal? Oh, I love it all. I love talking to people. I love my team. Um, Do you I have actually, a favourite? I actually, what, in the team? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I couldn't possibly say. Not on count, count Wise her. choice. No, no, she doesn't, Josh. <laughs> <Wise> <laughs> <choice>. <laughs> <clears throat> no, I love it all. And I love the fact you can see something through from beginning to end. Yeah, yeah, that is the best bit. What about you? Joshua? Podcasts. No, they're not your favourite. <laughs> just love podcasts. Your favourite was the Christmas quiz. Where you didn't quite win. Fixed. Um, Favourite part of the job? It's all quite, it's it's all rewarding. Again, seeing stuff through from from start to end is amazing. But it's, I think it's seeding expectations, getting more money for clients than they thought, getting them into houses they thought weren't available, saving a deal that's about to fall through is Mm. is amazing. So it's... um, it's rewar- it's all it's a highly rewarding job, isn't it? Who's your favourite? Who's your favourite self member? Uh, Kath. 
<laughs> of course. Easy. E- easy. I feel What's like you can after? get away with that because you're right here. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> What does he need? He's always after something from you, Kat. Always, I know. Just a cuddle. There'll be a problem just somewhere lo- along the line. Yeah. Just love a cuddle. I need you. Remember that time I complimented you? I'm back. I need my. I need what I need. Um, so last, just some f- quick fire questions. I feel like I'm going to know most of the answers to these. Salt and vinegar or cheese and onion? Cheese and onion. Cheese and onion every day of the week. Gross. Um, what's your favourite cocktail? Um, a frozen margarita. Mm. Stella. That's not a cocktail. It's got wheat and barley in it. <laughs> but it doesn't have a Sounds cherry. Sounds like Robertson's squash. Nice glass. Um, your Batman or Spider Man? Batman. That was just for you. What about you, Kat? Um, you've got granddaughters, haven't you? I have so, got grand. I have got a grand. I've got two grand. Oh, have now. you? Yeah. So I would say Batman. Ah, oh, that's everyone's favourite, isn't he? He's the man. Um, Tom Cruise or George Clooney? George Clooney. Margot Robbie or Maya Jama? Maya Jama. That's it. Dream. Thanks, James.